Hey guys, today I'm going to share a recipe for a bug spray to get rid of aphids and spider mites in the garden. On my front porch of my shop, I have got spider mites in every container and aphids on my green beans. I got ants farming the aphids and it's just a mess. Definitely time to make up some spray and get these little guys out of here. So we'll uh, head on into the shop and I'll show you how. So I'm going to be making a gallon of this and I'm going to be using a little bit of this uh, cast aisle peppermint soap and if you don't have the peppermint cast aisle soap, any kind of soap, dish soap will work. Um, cast aisle is the best as far as I'm concerned, but um, if not, you can use peppermint oil in place of that. and with the soap and then tea tree oil and spike lavender that is what i love it really stops them from coming back as far as i'm concerned not only kills them but it really repels them too and then neem oil and i'm also going to be using hydrogen peroxide and this is three percent and you really should dilute it down to one percent so if you did like a one-to-one, -one, you're gonna get a 1.5. So I do two to one and we'll get this uh, diluted down so that way it won't burn your plants because it will burn your plants if you put it on at 3%. So we'll do a, a two to one and what we'll do here should have had all this stuff already up. Okay, is I'm going to do a quarter. Doesn't have to be too precise, but you definitely don't want to burn them. And then I'll do, and I use distilled water for everything I do. I just make it, think it makes things work better. Um, it definitely is like a preservative, you know, it keeps everything cleaner. So, and I'm gonna use this gallon, pour it in here. And this is gonna be for a gallon. And all I used was a it was um, an eighth of a cup, an eighth of a cup of the hydrogen peroxide and then diluted down. So diluted it down, it would bring it up to three eighths, three eighths of a cup. And then for the cast aisle soap, I use one teaspoon for a gallon. I'm going to put a whole teaspoon in there. And this has already got peppermint in it, so I'm not going to put peppermint in it. If you were to do the peppermint, I would probably put five drops of peppermint in there. And then I'm going to do the tea tree oil. I'm going to do one teaspoon of the tea tree oil. And one teaspoon of the neem oil. And then I'm going to use one teaspoon of the lavender oil. Now I have, um, I'm going to show video of my um my garden and what's going on but there was a uh oh my goodness i can't think um praying mantis he was up there by the ants so he's definitely eating on the ants and i don't i mean this will kill him so i really i need to relocate him before i go out there and spray
This is totally pet safe. So when Coco and Cookie are out there and I've sprayed it and it's dried and everything, if they munch on some leaves or anything, it's not gonna hurt them. Even the neem oil, there's not enough in here to hurt them and it'll be fine. Definitely better than any kind of pesticide that you buy that's chemical. Okay, this is the best bug killer ever. Now you can add more neem to it. And, um, and sometimes it's necessary, but I'm hoping with all these other essential oils it won't be, but I've had, there's been times when I've had to do that for like bigger, like things that are more hard shelled and stuff. So I'm gonna put bug spray. So I know what it is. Okay. So I'm gonna go put this in my sprayer and meet you outside. Okay, I have one of these awesome 360 degree power sprayers. I do like to use my handheld pump up sprayer, but I totally forgot I had that full of spinosad, which I was using to kill fleas in the hen house. So I'll be using this one and I don't have that much to do out here. So, let's see how good this stuff actually kills everything. Okay, so you really, really want to start saturating everything and make sure you get under the leaves. That's why I love this 360 degree sprayer because you can go upside down if need be. This is all up on a trellis so I can, you know, it's like eye level and I can get up under the leaves pretty easily. But when you get down low, you got to make sure you get under the leaves. And I'm spraying, I am spraying every leaf whether I see anything or not. But I'm really concentrating on the areas of where I see the spider mites. And I'm spraying my peas here. And up on that, these two oak trees I just got from the nursery yesterday, and I did see spider mites on them. It might just be the time for spider mites in Oklahoma right now. I mean, I know we can kind of like get sieges of things, but um, my tomatoes seem to have them the worst. These are, these tomatoes have been struggling all summer long, but um, I'm really saturating the areas that are really bad with the mites and my little oak tree seedlings are all full of spider mites and they've been having trouble growing all summer long so this is really safe for pets too um both coco and cookie can be around this and even wet i mean if they licked it it wouldn't really hurt them even the amount of tea tree oil and neem in there wouldn't hurt them i mean i wouldn't leave it out where they could drink it but i don't think they would and once it's dry it's super safe you know um you definitely want to like i'm spraying in the shade right now you don't want to spray this in the hot sun as that's just gonna like burn the plants you also don't want to do it during the hours that pollinators are out it'll kill like beneficial insects as well so you want to kind of like use it real carefully that way i noticed i did have a praying mantis up there eating ants and stuff so i kind of went and skipped around him once it's dry it probably won't hurt him it probably wouldn't hurt him anyway he's really big and hard shelled but i still wouldn't want to make him sick so i kind of just skipped around him and didn't spray it directly on him okay guys so that was my video on making bug spray 100 percent natural of course i'm all about that and um, it will definitely get rid of these aphids and the spider mites, which my plants can start thriving again. And they were definitely retracting and I could tell they weren't growing good. And I didn't even notice that this was really going on. I seen a few wispy things, but I thought it was the dog hair or something. And then I started seeing it on all the plants and it's just going from one to the other and getting bigger and bigger. And I realized, hey, and then the aphids, it's two. It was more the spider mites than the aphids, but I do have aphids. Ants farm aphids, which is so weird. But um, definitely on the green beans, 
I can't really see the aphids, but the ants are like all on where the green beans come out. And then days later, there's all the, like eight, you can tell there's aphids there. So I might have to keep up on that just a little bit because um, aphids seem to just be like prolific. You know, they, I think they live in your soil or something. I'm gonna go ahead and put some diatomaceous earth down. I have a video on that. Um, and I'll link it and put it in the description box too because diatomaceous earth in the soil kills a lot of, you know, little creepy crawlies and stuff. So uh, all kinds of, you know, gnats and great for it, uh, indoor plants too. And I'm going to go do my indoor plants with this and um, yeah, give it a try. It is excellent stuff, so much better than the chemicals and it really and truly works. Talk to you later. Bye.